Amen. Amen. Keep standing as we pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we do thank you and bless your name. Thank you because you brought us for a good purpose. I will pray that that purpose you will fulfill in Jesus' name. We we'll pray that your word will enrich every one of our lives and make us better leaders, better pastors in the vineyard of the Lord in Jesus' name. We we'll pray that as we grow, your church will grow. As we prepare to enter glory on the final day, your people that we are leading will also go with us in Jesus' name. Open our eyes of understanding. Revive our spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We thank the Lord for the privilege he has given us uh, this period. That we will have the leaders meeting together. And we thank the Lord for all our leaders who are connected with us. And we're praying that the Lord will enrich every life in Jesus' name. We're looking at Matthew chapter 25. And I'm reading from verse 30. Matthew chapter 25, verse 30. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of tears. For this servant we're reading about, that was his final time. No chance to repent. No chance to make amends. No chance to turn over and say, I'll do it again. Because the final time, the day of reckoning, the day of judgment had come for him. For us, it is different. For us, we still have the chance. We have this day. And we have the days ahead of us if Jesus tarries. And I need to tell you that from the word of God, somebody might have been unprofitable in the past, and today he can turn around. And he can become profitable. And I want to examine the scriptures with you on the transformation of from profitable servants to profitable servants. The transformation of unprofitable servants to profitable servants as I've told you the man we read about there that Jesus spoke about in that parable had no chance to repent but as we look at Philemon having only one chapter verses 10 and 11 it says I beseech thee for my son Onesimus whom I have begotten in my bonds. Then in verse 11, which in time past was to thee unprofitable, but now profitable to thee and to me. As we look at that verse 11, it talks about on the one hand a man who had been unprofitable, but something happened, it will happen to you. And then he became profitable. And Paul the apostle could speak confidently and tell Philemon, I'm sending him back to you. It will not be like it was in the past, unprofitable. It, was, it will not be like it was in the past that he didn't make any gain. He didn't make any impact in the work you committed to his hand. Because now I'm sending him back with a new strength, a new power, a new wisdom, a new zeal, a new passion. And he's going to be profitable. And the Lord is sending you forth out of this place tonight. And you are going to now become profitable. And the Lord will look at you and he will have pleasure on you. And he will be pleased with your service and pleased with your life. He says in verse 11, which in time past was to thee unprofitable but now at this time at this time now at the present time profitable to thee and to me the message is the transformation of unprofitable servants to profitable servants there are three things we're going to talk about number one the marks of a profitable man the marks of a profitable man. As when the service of the Lord, as when leadership, 
as we are in this great commission ministry. And then we're saying we want to be profitable in the kingdom of God. What are the characteristics? What are the marks? What are the things the Lord is looking for in my life, in your life, in our lives together, and in our ministry? That God will say, that's a profitable man. That's a profitable woman. That's a profitable servant in the kingdom of God. The marks of a profitable man. Point number two, the match with progressive mentors. We're going to look at somebody in the Bible and he was unprofitable before, then he became profitable. We want to find out what was the match. When we say match is the movement, M-A-R-C-H, the match with progressive members. And then point number three will be Mark, that's the name, Mark, capital M with a comma now, the profitable minister. Mark, the profitable minister. We're coming to number one. What's number one over there? The marks of a profitable man. We're looking at Second Timothy chapter 4. Second Timothy chapter 4, it talks about this in verse 11. It says, only look, it's with me. Take Mark and bring him with thee. For he is profitable to me for the ministry. It says, as I consider Mark at this time, this is somebody who had been sent away before, or who had left the work before. Now, he is coming back to the work. In fact, it was, that was a thing that caused argument and a real contention between Barnabas and Paul. Because Paul said, it's unqualified. He went away from the work. He is inexperienced. He cannot do the work. And Barnabas said, let's try him again. And Paul, the apostle, said, there's no point. And then that sharp contention brought a division, a separation. And then Barnabas went with Mark. And then Paul the Apostle went with Silas. But now, some time had passed. And Mark had had an opportunity to rethink and to think through, what did I do? Why did I do that? Why did I forsake the work? And now Paul the Apostle saw in him that the qualities of a profitable man, a profitable minister, were right there. The characteristics were there. That's why it says, take Mark and bring him with thee. For he is profitable to me for the ministry. Now, what does it take then for us to be profitable? We're going to look at some scriptures. I need to have some new understanding of the scriptures, the marks of a profitable man. We're looking at Matthew chapter 5, and I'm reading from verses 29 and 30. Matthew chapter 5, we're looking at verses 29 and 30. It says in verse 29, If thy right hand cause, uh, cause thee, offend thee, pluck it out, and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee, for one of thy members, that shall perish, than that, and not that thy whole body shall be cast into hell. What's that? What was Jesus talking about? Jesus was talking about this, that... You're on your way to glory. You're on your way to heaven. And then you see that something, whatever it is, is different from A to B. It's different from brother to sister. It's different from me to you. It's different between worker and worker or leader and leader. For you in particular, you discover that this thing that looks important to you, as if it were your right hand, it will cause you to offend. It will make you to miss heaven. And then the Lord said, it will be good to look at that thing for yourself, for yourself, not for me, not for other people, for yourself. You look at that thing, you cut it off. Then it says you become a profitable person because that's profitable for you. And to get rid of that thing and to get to heaven, than to keep that thing and then you are hindered from getting to heaven. Well, say is focus on heaven. Focus on heaven. I want to get to heaven. I want to take as many people as possible with me to heaven. And anything that will hinder me from getting 
getting to heaven as important as my right hand and as important as my eye and then I pluck it up because I'm focusing on heaven. If we're going to be profitable, one of the marks is that we focus on heaven. Focus on heaven. You're thinking of heaven. You're working for heaven and your attention is in heaven. We're looking at Mark chapter 8. In Mark chapter 8, I'm looking at verse 36. For what shall it profit a man? It's talking about profitability again. What shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? The focus here is on your soul. The redemption of the soul, the righteousness of the soul, the restoration of the soul, the regeneration of the soul. And it says anything that will tamper with the regeneration of your soul, anything that will tamper with the renewal of your soul, anything that will tamper with the readiness of your soul to heaven, you have to cut it off. Because you count your soul as a greater profit than any gain, any material gain. And so what's the characteristic of a profitable man a profitable man a profitable minister is always looking at his soul if that thing will drag my soul to the mud if that thing will get my soul back to where i'm coming from if that thing will get my soul to hell no no i cannot have that i count my soul a greater gain than any material gain. Not only that, you look at the souls of people around you and the Lord has given you the privilege and a commission and a ministry and he says reach out to those souls and get those souls and get them into the kingdom of God. Anything that will hinder you, material gain, monetary gain, political gain, chieftaincy gain, any gain in this world that will tamper, that will hinder the outreach to those souls, so I cannot have that because I'm looking looking at the souls are the most important thing any other gain that competes with that will have to go that's the characteristic of a, pro of a profitable man or profitable minister i'm looking at first corinthians chapter 7 first corinthians chapter 7 and i'm reading here from verse 35 first corinthians chapter 7 we're reading from verse 35 it tells us in verse 35 look at this it says and this i speak for your profit this i speak for your profit is talking about something profitable it's talking about how you are going to maintain a profitable life a profitable ministry a profitable outreach and it says this i speak for your profit not that i may cast a snare upon you but for your for that which is uh, comely and then it goes on to say and that ye may attend upon the lord tell me the rest there without distraction attend upon the lord without distraction you know you're doing something and then you are concentrating on it and then something crosses your way and it causes you distraction it causes you absent mindedness it causes you a kind of a slowing down as if uh, do i want to don't i want to can i continue can i not continue and then it's like your service to the lord is then being interrupted it's been hindered and it's distraction it will be different for you and for me it will not be the same thing for everybody the thing that causes a distraction may not cause me distraction and the thing that causes how about their distraction may not cause the other sister their distraction you look for at it yourself and you say i have known by experience when i concentrate on the work of the lord when i'm moving on in the way of the lord when this happens it jolts me it distracts me it hinders me it touches my mind it's like i should turn back you will look at it yourself and what is a profitable minister a profitable man a profitable man in the ministry is the one that is always getting rid of the weed and the tears of destruction the thing that will distract you from the ministry from the calling the lord has given you i'm looking at first corinthians chapter 14 and here we're reading from verse 6 first corinthians chapter 14 verse 6 it says now brethren if i come unto you speaking with tongues what shall i profit you see that what shall i profit you if when you're in the ministry you're always thinking of profit 
How do I profit the ministry? How do I profit this kingdom of God? How do I profit the ministry of evangelism? Or the ministry of teaching? Or the ministry of pastoring? Or the ministry of shepherding? And then Paul the apostle says, Brethren, if I come to you speaking with tongues, what you don't understand, what shall I profit you? Except I shall speak to you either by revelation or by knowledge or by prophesying or by doctrine what are the marks of um, a profitable minister a profitable man number one is focused on heaven number two is uh, putting everything uh, to be of lower value than his own soul and the souls of the people number four is uh, is a person that is concentrating on the work of god and there's no distraction now number four is a person that is sharing the gospel in clear understandable language when somebody is just enjoying himself and is preaching and is using all these big vocabularies that we don't understand and is using all these uh, proverbial language that nobody understands it's like he's speaking in tongues and he's speaking to the air he will not be profitable in the ministry but if you come and there's revelation to the people there's enlightenment in the hearts of the people there is understanding in the hearts of the people you're teaching and you're preaching or you're leading people into the, onto the lord in salvation and everything is in clear language everything is understandable language that is profiting in the ministry you are profiting the people we're looking at um, acts of the apostles chapter 20 Acts of the Apostles chapter 20 I'm reading from verses 20 and 21 Acts of the Apostles chapter 20 Verses 20 and 21 Here the word of God makes it uh, very clear uh, What it means to be in profitable ministry Verse 20 here, chapter 20 Here it says And I kept back nothing That was profitable unto you but I've showed you and I've taught you publicly and from house to house and testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greek repentance toward God. You connect those two things together. I have kept nothing that was profitable unto you. Everything that was profitable for your salvation, I revealed to you. Everything that was profitable for your sanctification and holiness, I revealed to you. Everything that is profitable for you getting ready and getting to heaven, I've revealed unto you. That's a profitable seed. And it says, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks' repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, look at this now. It says, I'm profitable to you because I give you all things that are profitable, profitable for your salvation. If I didn't talk of repentance, if I didn't talk of faith, believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, if I talk about any other thing, I'm talking about the building of the Ark of Noah. I'm talking about how united those people were as they built a Bible. I'm talking about what strength it will take and what power it will take and all the calculation of the money and resources it will take to build a Solomon's temple and you have knowledge in your head i never told you about repentance i never told you about faith in the lord jesus christ i'm talking about marriage i'm talking about how to make a, you know your family happy i'm talking about how to keep me a good home keeper i'm talking about this about that i never talked about repentance i never spoke about uh, being born again i never spoke about faith in christ he said that's not profitable the very foundation any others i may not know all those other things i must know what it means to be born again if you're going to be profitable to the people he says i didn't keep this back from you repentance toward the lord jesus and uh, to talk god and then faith in the lord jesus christ i pray god will give us wisdom we're looking at galatians chapter 5 galatians chapter 5 i'm reading here from verse 2 galatians chapter 5 and we're reading from verse 2 Galatians chapter 5 Reading from verse 2 It says Behold I Paul say unto you That if ye be circumcised Christ shall profit you nothing 
If you be circumcised as a means to salvation, if you be circumcised as a means to knowing the Lord, it says Christ shall profit you nothing. That means if you allow religion, Old Testament religion, if you allow religion, the religion of the Pharisees, if you allow religion, the religion of uh, our religious uh, people in the past, you know, you are coming from this background, religious background, that religious background, if you allow that to interfere with the message of Christ and Christ alone, and faith and faith alone, and believing on the Lord Jesus Christ as the only way, as the only sacrifice, as the final sacrifice that leads us to heaven if you go into you know you bring in circumcision you bring in holy water you bring in holy void and then the people their confidence is not in the name of Christ not in the blood of Jesus Christ and not in the final sacrifice that Christ has made it says any of you that you have that confidence in that right, religious traditional thing Christ shall be of no profit unto you and then, so if I'm going to be a profitable minister what's the implication the implication is lift up christ christ jesus he is our savior jesus he is the all in all it is his death it is his blood that grants us salvation and there's no other thing and we clean the message from all the circumcision and all the religious things i'm looking at first timothy chapter and first timothy chapter four i'm reading from verse eight First Timothy chapter 4, and we're reading here from verse 8. It says in verse 8, For bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having the promise, having promise of the life that now is and that which is to come. And what's the profit here? Godliness. Godliness is profitable in all things. It means that I appreciate godliness. I believe in godliness. Godliness. I practice godliness in the day, in the night. I emphasize godliness for my personal life. I emphasize godliness. It says godliness is profitable in all things. It says bodily exercise profiteth little. What it means is secular uh, and um, secular enterprise profiteth little. What it means is physical uh, business profits little. What it means is economy profits a little. What it means is extra moral studies all those physical things they profit only little but you want to be a profitable minister you make all those things to get to the background and you say the number one thing in my life is this godliness godliness for me godliness for the people i'm ministering to and it says godliness is profitable in all things i pray god will grant us wisdom and we will stand with the word of God and will be, we'll behave our lives, we'll live our lives in such a way that we know that this is the focus of our lives. Then you become profitable. We're looking at uh, Hebrews chapter 4 and I'm reading from verse 2. Hebrews chapter 4 and we're looking at verse 2. It says, for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them did not profit them. The words they heard, they hear all the time, they listen all the time, but it says the word they, they heard, did not profit them, not be mixed with faith in them that heard it. How do I become a profitable man, a profitable minister, a profitable worker, a profitable leader? That the word of God I'm hearing, I receive it with faith. I receive it with believing. I receive it trusting the Lord. And it is that trusting the Lord with the word of God I'm hearing that makes it profitable. You become a profitable man, a profitable woman. Are you still in the house? I said you become profitable in Jesus' name. Now, uh, let, let's see an example uh, before we leave uh, that part of what it means to be profitable. I'm coming to Exodus chapter 25. Exodus chapter 25. Uh, the Lord had given us the work and the Lord gave uh, this man the work. And he showed him what it means to be profitable. Look at Exodus chapter 25. I'm reading from verse 9. According to all that I showed thee. After the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so shall ye make it. 
Now God had called Moses and God gave him this assignment to do. And he said, I showed you the pattern. If you're going to be profitable unto me, if you're going to be faithful unto me, if you're going to be acceptable in my sight, you will do everything exactly as I showed you on the mount. Look at verse 40. Verse 40, and look that thou make them after the pattern which was showed thee in the mount. The Lord repeated that again. He said, you know, uh, Moses, what I'm looking for, I'm not looking for your ingenuity. I'm not looking for your originality. I'm not looking for your personal wisdom. I'm not looking for that, your Egyptian learning. Everything you learned, I'm not looking for that. I'm looking for faithfulness i showed you on the mount that this is the way to go and then if you do everything like i've showed you then i will know that you are faithful and you are profitable unto me in the work i assigned unto you and it seems that the lord is telling us that if the lord is going to count us profitable he's shown us his way his will his word his wisdom and he says this is what you do and he's how to do my work and we keep to that will be profitable in jesus name chapter 26 i'm reading from verse 30 and thou shalt rear up the tabernacle according to the fashion thereof which was showed thee in the mount the lord kept on repeating that he said moses don't take your eyes off the standard don't take your eyes off the pattern don't take your eyes off the model i showed it to you follow that and as you follow that i will know that you are faithful i will know that you are dependable i will know you are profitable unto me for the work i've given into your hand look at chapter 40 now let's see the results of what he did let's see how moses actually did what the lord told him to do and see the profitability and see how profitable he was in the things of the lord we're looking at chapter 40 verse 16 chapter 40 we're looking at verse 16 those did moses according to all that the lord commanded him so did he amen, amen. what a man what a minister, what a leader, that as the Lord had committed everything to his son, he didn't turn this way or turn that way. He didn't change this and modify this just exactly as the Lord gave him to do. That's exactly what he did. Look at verse 19. But look at the last line, last line, last nine in verse 19. As the Lord commanded Moses. Look at the last line in verse 21. As the Lord commanded Moses. Look at the last line in verse 23. As the Lord commanded Moses. Look at the last line in verse 25. As the Lord commanded Moses. Look at the last line in verse 27. As the Lord commanded Moses. The last line in verse 29. As the Lord commanded Moses. The last line in verse 32. As the Lord commanded Moses. You see that the Lord examined him every detail. And the Lord examined I mean what he did in every minute detail and the result is that as the Lord commanded Moses as the Lord commanded Moses that's what he did that's faithfulness and that's profitability and I pray that every one of us will be profitable in Jesus name now we're coming to point number two match with progressive mentors the match with progressive mentors if for example somebody had been unfaithful and somebody had been um, a kind of uh, unprofitable and now this is my time i will be profitable i said i will be profitable if i want to move on from being unprofitable to being profitable what do i do how do i do that how do i get that done the match with progressive mentors when we talk of match here we're talking of moving side by side you look at that mentor he is progressive you look at that mentor he is uh, profitable you look at that mentor he is productive and then you match with him you stay side by side with him and you move to the rhythm of the beat and the steps of that mentor that is it's like when you have uh, you know people that are doing a 
parade and they file up and they line up like this and there's a master that beats the drum and then he gives them shows them the step right left right left right left a uh, turn right or turn left and all that and you listen to the beats and then you are following the beats and the rhythm of that master and that's what the lord is telling us if we're going to be profitable you align yourself you associate yourself you attach yourself to that mentor and then as he gives the beat you go on if he is successful you are going to be successful if he makes progress you are going to make progress if he is profitable you are going to be profitable you follow the organized procession organized procession you know if we're going in a procession and then somebody strays out now that's not matching with the rest of us but when we're going in a prophet in real procession and we're having that parade and then we're marching and then you even see our feet you know we raise it up at the same time we put it down at the same time we're focusing in the same direction at the same time that's how everybody gets to the same place and to the same destination and you're going to march I said you are going to march and you are going to move with progressive people in Jesus name we spoke about mark and this mark was unprofitable that's why Paul the apostles I don't want to have that man on my team I don't want to have that failure in my team I don't want to have that coward in my team the one that cannot take a decision the one that does not have any backbone he does not know to do anything successfully is going to retard us he will set us back let him sit back at home but eventually he became progressive he became productive and he became uh, promising and it became profitable i'm talking about somebody there Amen. you'll be profitable in jesus name Amen. how did it happen let me show you we're looking at first peter chapter 5 first peter chapter 5 i'm reading here from verse 13 first peter chapter 5 and we're looking at verse 13 it says the church that is at babylon elected together with you salutes you and so does tell me marcus my son so does that's the same person mark there marcus my son he became a profitable person because he was associated with peter and peter referred to him as my son what's the implication of that for mark for marcus look at proverbs chapter 4 Proverbs chapter 4, I'm reading here from verse 20. That is, he now associated himself with, uh, with Peter, the apostle. He said, I failed, but I'm going to succeed. I was unprofitable, I'm going to become profitable. I was unproductive, I am going to become productive. What do I do now? Who will take me up? Now that I'm down, now that I'm a failure, and Peter is available, the apostle, to take him up. Now that Peter is going to mentor me, and now that Peter is going to mature me, now that Peter is going to manage all those various things in my life, what's going to be my attitude? I'm going to be to him like a son. Look at Proverbs chapter 4 verse 20. It says, and uh, chapter 4 verse 20 of uh, Proverbs, it says, My son, attend to my words and incline thy ears unto my sins. That's where it starts you pick up that mentor and you follow that mentor you look at that mentor you listen to his word and it says you attend to my words mark that's what you have to do peter is not referring to you as a son in the faith and he says he wants to bring you from being unprofitable to being profitable number one attend to his words give attention to his word don't let the word fall to the ground everything he says you take it in you take it on board and you live on it we're looking at chapter 7 verse 1 in chapter 7 verse 1 my son keep my words and lay up my commandments with thee that is your story top your story top you say it is the word the word coming from that mentor the word that is coming from the master the word that is coming from the one that is going to pick me up and make me profitable i store it in my heart i do not allow it to ever be wasted chapter 19 of proverbs proverbs chapter 19 i'm reading from verse 27 
it was 27 seize my son to hear the instruction that causes to hear from the words of knowledge it says now you have to pay attention you have to be focused and when you hear the right word don't go and waste your time again and allow everything to be washed away by listening to something else that will make you go astray you concentrate just on that and say this is enough for me the word of god is enough for you you're not going to have the word of god and then error and then falsehood and then you know sound doctrine and all these wayside discussions you say no i don't have time for that our time is gone already a lot of time has been wasted already look at how old i am and i was so profitable and now i want to be profitable i don't have any time for any side talk i don't have time again for any false doctrine the little time that remains i'm going to fill it full with the pure word of god and i'm going to follow that and live by that and by the grace of god it will not take time you'll be profitable in jesus name we're looking at chapter 23 verse 19 proverbs chapter 23 verse 19 hear thou my son and be wise and guide thy heart in the way that is the words you are hearing you apply to your method and to your way and you apply it to how i lead house fellowship how i preach the word of god to the people the ones you see from your mentor the one you see from your trainer the one you see from the one that is coaching you you will say this is how we did it when you are praying for the sick you follow that when you are teaching the people you follow that and you want you're teaching the people for transformation for a change you're not just talking you're understand that this is how the mentor does it and this is how i'm going to do it and then you say that you guide your life you guide your heart in the way we're looking at chapter 24 verse 21 chapter 24 verse 21 it's talking about my son here it says my son fear thou the lord and the king and meddle not with them that are given to change that's how come profitable if you are you know always uh, finding the people that backslide and the people that change and the people that don't have anywhere they're going and the people that cannot concentrate on the truth and stay with the truth if you mingle yourself marry yourself with them you'll not be profitable but you make up your mind you say this is the day of decision I see profitability in front of me and I'm getting it. Somebody there said I'm getting it. And because I'm going to be successful, I'm talking for myself, I'm going to be successful, I'm going to be profitable, and I'm going to achieve in this work of the kingdom. Because of that, I do not meddle with the people that are wasting their lives. I just concentrate on this one thing I do, and I'm talking about you, you are going to succeed in Jesus' name. I'm looking at Philemon chapter, 20, chapter 1, verse 24. Philemon. It has only one uh, chapter, and it's uh, verse uh, 24. Philemon before Hebrews. In uh, Philemon, we're looking at this uh, verse 24. It's still talking about this Mark or Marcos, the same person. Uh, verse 24, it says, Marcos, Aristarchus, Demas, and Lucas, my fellow laborers. That's Paul the Apostle. Paul the Apostle said, he was unprofitable before and I see something shining out of his life and I see something that comes out of his life and I said I didn't want a dead wood on my back I didn't want a backslider on my team I didn't want a, an unprofitable person on my team something has happened to Mark is now alive something has happened to mark it's not profitable and then paul the apostle said come on board come back and then we're going to do this work together and paul the apostle said he is my fellow laborer i pray that will be spoken of you you see there are some people they're never able to forget the past they fall they stay there they fail they stay there they make a mistake they stay there they fumble they stay there they, they you know they become unprofitable and then paul the apostle speaks about them and he speaks about them publicly and said that man will not follow us and for paul was so strong about what he said that barnabas went away there are some people like that i don't have anything to do with that paul for the rest of my life he doesn't have love he doesn't know how to help people he doesn't know how to help the people that fall to rise up but mark said me i will succeed 
I said me, I will succeed. I will be profitable. And he wasn't hiding from Paul. He knew that if he is going to have a large ministry, an extensive ministry, a wide ministry, this is the man that is turning the world upside down. And I want to have a part in turning the world upside down. And he made himself available to Paul the apostle. Are you available? Of course, I know you are. I said you're available. And you know, if you're available, forget the past. Forget what happened last week, what happened last month, what happened last year. Here you are. You are available. Maybe we made a public comment about you and we said, that man, that woman, they don't count on him, don't count on her. She's unprofitable. But today, something will change. Today, something will turn around. Because Paul, the apostle, now mentioned him and you said he is profitable to me in the ministry and is my fellow laborer fellow laborer i pray you will become in jesus name we're looking at uh, colossians we're looking at colossians chapter 4 colossians chapter 4 i'm reading from verse 10 colossians chapter 4 and we're reading from verse 10 colossians chapter 4 and we're looking at uh, verse 10 colossians chapter 4 i'm looking at uh, verse 10 it says aristarchus my fellow prisoner saluted you and tell me the next name Tell me out loud. Marcus, that's our man. Mark, sister, son to Barnabas, touching whom ye receive commandments. If he come unto you, tell me, receive him. It's not like it was before. Now he's up and doing. Now he's a revivalist. Now he's a profitable person. All we said about him before, forget about that. If he comes now, receive him. That's what the Lord is telling us, that the way God has helped that those people, that same way, the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. I come to point number three now. Mark, the profitable minister. Mark, the profitable minister. How did this all happen? That this man became such a profitable minister. Well, it happened that he himself now just said a change will come transformation will come the grace of god is available for everybody and thank god that grace is available for you and you will have that grace in jesus name uh, we're looking at uh, we're looking at uh, uh, at this uh, second timothy chapter four second timothy chapter four and i'm reading from verse 11 second timothy chapter four i'm reading from verse 11 second timothy chapter four I will read from verse 11 and see this mark who became a profitable minister in verse 11 of chapter 4 here is what it says only Luke is with me take mark when you are coming you must bring this man take mark and bring him with thee for he is profitable to me for the ministry and Mark eventually got to the point where even Paul the Apostle could testify about him. We will testify about you. Yeah. We'll be happy over you. We'll rejoice over your progress in ministry in Jesus' name. And then uh, Mark was he was unprofitable that was of the past and there was a great change a great transformation and now he is profitable number one is profitable to god for the ministry number two is profitable to the gospel of christ profitable to the gospel of christ number three is profitable to the church the ministers of the church that are moving on in the things of the lord that's why paul the apostle testified of him and then is profitable to his generation profitable to his generation and then not only to his generation do you know he was profitable and is not profitable to all generations after him think about that actually that's even more important than what he did when he was alive because now it's profitable to every generation that has lived from the fourth century until this day we have one of the books of the bible tell me the gospel according to Tell me out loud. Saint Mark. Saint. He became a saint. Not a backslider. Not a person that quit. 
because a change came upon him. And now as I thought about this, and I want to tell you something. I don't normally uh, tell you this. I had to pray. I said, Lord, give this to me because I wanted to know how profitable was Mark. I'm telling you literally. Because as I look at Mark, and I wanted to see how can I quantify, how can I describe the profitability of Mark in the gospel for his generation, for our generation, and for the generations that followed. Here is what I found out when I prayed. I'm emphasizing that because I wouldn't go through all this were it not for this is what the Lord gave me and this is what he showed me. And I couldn't read it from, from anywhere. Let me show you chapter 1. In chapter 1, look at chapter 1 of Mark. And see how profitable this man was. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And then it goes on to talk about Jesus. Look at verse 7. And he preached saying, there cometh one mightier than I. The lashet of whose shoes I am not worthy to, uh, worthy to stoop down and, uh, and uh, unloose. And then in verse 8, I indeed baptized you with water. And uh, where it says, uh, and he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. And then he goes on in verse 11. In verse 11, it says, And there came a voice uh, from heaven, saying, Thou art my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And on and on it goes to the end of that chapter. And Mark was talking about the Son with a mission. The son with a mission. He wanted to talk about Jesus Christ. And the way he could describe Jesus Christ in chapter 1 is that he is the son of God. But he's the son with a mission. And he himself, knowing that Jesus Christ is a, is a son with a mission, he said, I'll be a man with a mission. I'm not going to pass through this world and just go like that. A mission, a commission, a vision. Something that I'm going to do and will benefit many lives. He Jesus Christ in chapter 1 as a son with a mission in chapter 2. As he comes to chapter 2, he's talking about the paralytic man. And he says in verse 5, chapter 2 verse 5, he says, when Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, son, thy sins be forgiven thee. In verse 9, whether is it easier to say to the sick of the palsy, thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, arise and take up thy bed and walk, but that she may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. He says to the sick of the palsy, I say unto you, arise and take up thy bed and go thy way to thine house. And immediately he arose. He's talking about the Savior in his might. The Savior in his might. And he says, if this Jesus Christ, he has the power to forgive sin, he can forgive me too. He has the power to heal the sick, he can heal me too. He has the power to manifest his power. He's the mighty one of majesty, of power, of miracle power. He can do that in me too. That's why he trusted the Lord. And a change came, and the change is coming to you tonight in Jesus' name. In chapter 3, he's not talking about the selection of his ministers. He said that Jesus Christ, in chapter 3, I'm reading from Mark chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 13. Mark chapter 3, verse 13. It says he goes up into a mountain and called unto him whom he would, and they came unto him, and your day twelve that they should be with him, and uh, that he might send them forth to preach. And then he selected them, and to them he gave power to heal sicknesses and to cast out devils. And then he gives us the names there. Chapter 3 is talking about the selection of his ministers. And he said, if he could select Peter, he can select me too. He could select those fishermen, he can select me too. He selected those illiterate people, he'll select me too. The hand of the Lord is upon you. He has come to select you. 
And then when he selects you, he gives you the power, he gives you the authority, he gives you the enablement, you will succeed in Jesus' name. And then Mark goes on in chapter 4, he's talking about now the sermon to the multitudes. The sermon to the multitude. We're looking at chapter 4, I'm reading from verses 2 and 3. It says, and he taught them many things by parables and said unto them in his doctrine, behold, uh, he says, uh, hacking, behold, there went out a sower to sow. And then he continues there. Look at verse 33. In verse 33, he tells us, uh, and, and with many such parables spake he the word unto them as they were able to hear it. And without a parable spake he not unto them. And when they were alone, he expanded all things to his disciples. Chapter 4 is talking about a sermon to the multitudes. He comes to chapter 5 and here Mark, you think about Mark was unprofitable and he wasn't even there when Jesus Christ was here on earth but you know what happened? He associated with Peter and Peter saw everything and then he listened attentively to that Peter and though Peter did not write any gospel that is the history of what happened when Jesus was on earth, this man, Mark you'll be like that a man that was unprofitable a man that was through aside and said you are, you are hindrance to the progress of the gospel you are hindrance to the movement of the gospel you are hindrance to the passion of the apostle and now this man associated with Peter and all the story and everything that happened before he even came he received everything he has preserved it for the world your life will preserve something for the world will do something that we'll read about that will think about, that will be joyful about in Jesus' name. In chapter 5, he's talking about Jesus' authority over disease. Talking about Jesus' authority over demons. And talking about Jesus' authority over death. Over demons, over disease, and over death. That's in chapter 5. Look at verse 7. Chapter 5, verse 7. It says, and cried with a loud voice and said, what have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. And for he had said, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And that unclean spirit came out. And then as you go on in the chapter, chapter 5, verse 25, in verse 25 it says, And a certain woman which had an issue of blood twelve years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing better but rather grew worse when she heard of Jesus came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said if I may but touch his clothes I shall be made, I shall be whole and straightway the fountain of her blood dried up. It will happen to you. Miracle from the Lord Jesus Christ. And then from verse uh, 41, look at verse 41, it says, And he took the damsel by the hand and said unto her, That little Komai, which is being interpreted, damsel, I say unto thee, and uh, arise, I. Uh, uh, I say unto thee, arise, and straightway the damsel arose and walked, for she was of the age of twelve years, and they were astonished with a great astonishment. Chapter 5 is talking about a signs and miracles, a signs and miracles, supernatural signs, wonderful signs that the people marveled about. Now we come to chapter 6 in verse 7. In chapter 6 verse 7, this is what he said uh, Mark is telling us in verse 7 it says and he called unto him the twelve and he began to send them forth two by two, two and two and they gave them power over unclean spirits look at verse 12 in verse 12 and they went out and preached that men shall repent and they cast out many devils and anointed with oil that, uh, that many that were sick and they were here. Look at verse 30. In verse 30 it says, And the apostles gathered themselves together unto Jesus and told him all things that what they had done and what they had taught. Chapter 6, the sending forth of his ministers. The sending forth 
of his ministers. Now, he comes to chapter 7. And in chapter 7, here Mark is now concerned about the people that were misleading others. Look at chapter 7. I'm reading here from verse 7. Reading from chapter 7, verse 7. In chapter 7, verse 7, it says, And how be it in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrine, the doctrines of men, for laying aside the commandments of God, ye hold the tradition of men. It tells us in verse 13, it says, Making the word of God of none effect through your tradition, which ye have delivered, and many such things ye do. Chapter 7 is talking about uh, the, the, the sin of misleading ministers, the sin of ministers who mislead their hearers. And then we come to chapter 8. In chapter 8, I'm reading from verse 15. And you see what uh, Mark is emphasizing. We're looking at the ministry of Mark because, you know, he was unprofitable before, but look at him now and see him from chapter to chapter exalting the Lord Jesus Christ, lifting up the Lord Jesus Christ and doing what no other person had done before him. Not you see, if you look at uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you will think that Matthew wrote the gospel first. But no, really, really, it was Mark that wrote first. After that, we have Matthew. After that, we have Luke. And after that, we have John. Actually, John wrote, one was about 95 years of age. Far, far, when almost all the other apostles had died. But Mark actually wrote first, this unprofitable person, this person that didn't know his left from his right, and Paul, the apostle said, you're unprofitable, you're undependable. He became dependable. I will be. He became profitable. I will be. He became productive. I will be. And then he was able to run ahead and even wrote the gospel before all the other people that were with the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray you were wrong. And you run fast. The power, the energy, and the excitement, the passion to do everything you ought to do, the Lord will give unto you in Jesus' name. I'm coming to chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 15 here. Chapter 8 in verse 15 it says, And he charged them, saying, Take it and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the leaven of Herod. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, It is because we we have no bread. And when Jesus knew it, he says unto them, Why reason ye because ye have no bread? Perceive ye not yet, neither understand, neither understand have ye yet your heart hardened. Chapter 8 is talking about the shallowness of his messengers. The shallowness of his messengers. We come to chapter 9, and I'm sure you've heard about uh, this chapter 9 before I'm reading from verse 2. In chapter 9, verse 2, it says, After six days, uh, Jesus taketh him, uh, Peter, and James, and John, and leadeth them up into a mountain, high mountain, uh, apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his raiment became shining exceedingly white as uh, snow. And so as no fuller, no watchman, no dry cleaner on earth can whiten they can white them. And there appeared unto them Elias with Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. And Peter answered and said unto Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here, and let us make three tabernacles, one for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elias. And then for he wist not, he knew not what to say. For they were so afraid and there was a cloud that overshadowed them and a voice came up the, out of the cloud saying this is my beloved son hear him and suddenly when they had looked round about they saw no man anymore except save Jesus only with themselves chapter 9 the splendor of his majesty 
the splendor of his majesty you see what uh, mark is writing about he's writing about jesus christ from this angle from this angle from that angle and he's writing about him from all angles a man that was unprofitable before he began to do something spectacular extraordinary and the spirit of god will accomplish that in your life we're looking at chapter 10 i'm reading from verse 5 chapter 10 i'm reading from verse 5 it says in chapter 10 verse 5 it says and Jesus answered and said unto them, For the hardness of your heart, he wrote you this precept. But from the beginning of the creation, God made them male and female. For this cause shall a man leave his father and his mother and cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. So then they are no more twain, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man tell me let no man put asunder he's talking here about the sanctity of marriage chapter 10 the sanctity of marriage welcome to chapter 11 and chapter 11 is where jesus christ rode to jerusalem and then the people cried hosanna hosanna to the one that is to come and here um, the mark is talking about his sovereignty and majesty his sovereignty and majesty that's when he saw that fig tree that bore no fruit and he said no man eat fruit of thee forever anymore and when he said that he has supremacy over nature and he has sovereignty over the whole earth and then when the disciples saw that he said the the tree that of course yesterday is withered away it transferred it to them he said if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed you too you will say to this mountain be thou removed and it shall remove and says whatsoever therefore ye pray you you desire when you pray believe that ye have it and you'll have it in jesus name it is it is that's the sovereignty of his majesty and we'll come to chapter 12 in chapter 12 we're looking at verse 29 chapter 12 we're looking at verse 29 here is you know mark is still telling us about the ministry and the message of the lord jesus christ chapter 12 i'm reading from verse 29 it says in verse 29 and jesus answered him the first of all commandments is this hear o israel the lord our god is one lord and thou shalt love the lord thy god with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength and this is the first commandment and the second is like unto it namely thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself the there is none other commandment greater than these. That's the scripture in miniature. The scripture in miniature. That is, all the scripture, everything conveys to just this little portion of the Bible. That all the things that God commanded, you look at the Ten Commandments, you look at the laws in the Old Testament, and you look at all that the prophets were saying, everything is condensed into this little thing. The scripture in miniature. That you love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. And then you love your neighbor as yourself. Then you don't have to cry all the other in the jewish uh, in the jewish uh, culture 613 laws that all those uh, priests and scribes have you know raked together and then you don't know which one you are breaking which one you are not breaking and jesus said you don't need 613 laws love the lord your god with all your heart all your soul all your mind love your neighbor as yourself and that's the whole scripture in miniature welcome to chapter 13 as we come to chapter 13 we're looking at uh, verse 4 chapter 13 verse 4 tells us it says tell us when shall these things be and what shall be uh, the, the, the sign when all these things shall be fulfilled and jesus answering began to say take heed that let, let's tell any man deceive you for many shall come in my name saying i am the christ i am christ i shall deceive many and when you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars be ye not troubled for sought for such things um, must needs be but the end is not yet for nation shall rise against nation 
and kingdom against kingdom and there shall be earthquakes in diverse places and there shall be famines and the troubles said these these are the beginnings of sorrows and then Jesus goes on and he spoke about the events that will happen just before he comes and then look at verse 24 in verse 24 he says but in those days after the tribulation the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars of heaven shall fall and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken and then shall they see the son of man come in in the clouds with great power and great glory that's talking about the suffering before his manifestation the lord is coming as we have heard as we have learned the great tribulation will happen and all this chapter is talking about the devastation that will take place the wars that will take place the atrocities that will take place and the desolation that daniel spoke about that will take place and the children of israel will suffer they will suffer a lot and then after that suffering after the great tribulation then the manifestation the appearance of the lord jesus christ as he comes and then the angels will come with him we would have gone at that time because before this will happen there will be the rapture the catching away of the saints because i show you a mystery we shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye and then we'll be caught up together with him we'll be with him in the air and then after we have gone great tribulation i will not be here I said I will not be here. I pray you will not be here in Jesus' name. And then he talks about after that, he will be manifested. He will come. He's talking about the suffering before his manifestation. I'm looking at chapter 14. In chapter 14, I'm reading from verse 33. Chapter 14, we're looking at verse 33. Chapter 14, verse 33, here is what uh, Mark is telling us about uh, this event. Now, it says, and he takes with him Peter and James and John and uh, began to be so amazed and to be very heavy and said unto them my soul is exceeding sorrowful unto death tarry ye here and watch and he went forward a little and fell on the ground and prayed that it, if it were possible the hour might pass from him and he said Abba Father all things are possible unto thee take away this cup from me nevertheless not what i will but as thou what what thou wilt that chapter is talking about the supplication and submission of the messiah the supplication and the submission of the messiah the supplication as a prayer when he prayed in agony when he prayed with all that sorrowful heart and then submission to the will of god that's how it was our messiah we're looking at chapter 15 chapter 15 i'm reading from verse 2 chapter 15 verse 2 this is the chapter where mark revealed that he was crucified in chapter 15 verse 2 and peter asked him as uh, so peter asked him at thou sorry pilate rather and pilate asked him at thou the king of the jews and he answering said unto him tell me thou seest it look at verse 12 in verse 12 here is what we read and pilate answered and said again unto them what will ye then that i shall do unto him whom ye call the king of the jews and they cried out again tell me crucify him and they crucified him this is the sacrifice of our mediator the sacrifice of our mediator and eventually he died he died on the cross and then he said father forgive them for they know not what they do and it is because of that sacrifice that he paid a price as a mediator that's how we come to salvation right now we turn away from our sin we believe on the lord jesus christ and the blood that is shed for us cleanses us and purges us from all our sin and he gives us the hope of heaven 
heaven and the hope of glory because now we don't have any condemnation we're walking in the spirit and the spirit is bearing witness in our hearts we're children of God redeemed by the blood of the lamb cleansed by the blood of the lamb washed by the blood of the lamb renewed by the blood of the lamb purified by the blood of the lamb and now after that is now committed the work into our hands it tells us in chapter 16 chapter 16 of Mark in verse 15 and he said unto them go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature and he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved thank God I'm saved I said thank God I'm saved he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved but he that believeth not shall be done and these signs shall follow them that have believed are there believers in the house today these signs shall follow them that believe in my name they shall cast out devils give me a good amen, amen. they shall speak with new tongues another amen. amen they shall take up serpents are you still there amen, amen. and if they drink any deadly sin it shall not hurt them give me a good amen, amen. and they they shall lay their hands on the sick and they shall recover. And then in verse 19, so then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and they went forth, we are going forth and they went forth you are going forth and they went forth and preached everywhere the Lord walking with them and confirming the words and confirming the word was signs following and the whole church said that salvation available for all men as we come to the end of mark it says salvation is now available for all men go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved and that's why you came to the kingdom because of this obedience of the great commission that mark had written and now the baton is given to you as this man who was unprofitable became profitable now your own day has come now your own time has come my brother this is your day my sister dear this is your day unprofitable before forget about that it's a new day and it's a new dawn i will be profitable you will be profitable we shall be profitable together in jesus name be a profitable servant of god receive god's restorative grace and then like mark Go forth and preach, and this work will prosper in your hand. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer. You have seen an unprofitable servant, unprofitable man, unprofitable minister who became profitable. This is your day, you will be you will be forget the past forget all the failures of the past and say god helped that man mark it's my turn it's my turn you will be profitable